You asked for it, we responded. You want to know about these questions at ATM Business? Well, we're responding with answers. All the time we get questions about the ATM Business. I thought I'd make a video about it. That way, some of the people who are asking questions, you could benefit from all these questions. You're thinking about these questions too. Maybe you're looking at getting into the ATM Business. You have some questions. We decided to make a video about this. And we're going to continue to make some of these videos about common questions, help you guys out, new to the game, trying to get into the business. And I also want to thank you guys. Anybody who bought our book, I want to thank you for buying our book and being part of the channel. And a little known fact, we've been doing this for five years on YouTube now. So I want to congratulate you guys. Thank you guys for supporting the channel. It's been an honor to serve the ATM community. Question number one, Bill, how much maintenance and what's the service requirements of when I'm in an ATM business? Can you give some light on that subject? Sure. Most maintenance on the ATMs, if you buy new, you will not have a lot of maintenance. The maintenance of an ATM in the early part of the business is going to be dispenser jams and paper jams. So if your dispenser has a bad bill or the bill rips, that will cause the ATM to go offline. That is a maintenance call. Also communication problems. So you have a wireless device, it's a cellular device that sits in your ATM. From time to time, the device or signal, it'll lock up. It's not a big fix. All you have to do is unplug your ATM or tell the store owner, unplug it and plug it back in. That'll reboot the wireless device. But from time to time, that does happen. Also Verizon, usually we use Verizon, AT&T or T-Mobile. They will have communication errors through their network causing it not to work. And what you'll have to do is reboot it, then it will search for signal and it'll work. But those are the major ATM challenges that you're gonna have with maintenance and service. And along with what you wanna do, and from every six months, you wanna to update to the latest, greatest software. All that is is just inserting a thumb drive into your ATM and then rebooting it and putting on the latest software. Here at PDQ, we supply that to all our customers free of charge. Some people charge for it, but we do not. Point number two, compliance and regulation. Compliance and regulation will either be for a business in general or it will be for your ATM business. So if you're in business in general, you will have to provide annual tax returns to the local government for your state and federal. I highly suggest you hire a certified public accountant to help you file at the end of the year to keep you in the good graces of our federal government and your local state. As far as the ATM business concern, one of the things you have to do is you have to have an ATM sticker on ATM that has the registered ISO. In this case, it would be our sticker into the business. As far as ATMs regulations, what you want to do is we'll be in communication with your ISO for any banking regulations as far as Visa and MasterCard. And then from time to time, your bank that you're going to get money out of or have your bank account with, they're going to ask for documentation for your ATM business. They might ask for an ISO agent agreement, which is agreement between you and your registered ISO. In this case, it would be us, a list of ATM, where the locations are located, how much cash you go through in a given amount of time. Those are all questions that your bank could ask for. Always remember that you're not MSB, which is a money service business. You are not selling currency. And just remind them from time to time, they have regime changes. They'll have compliance people that will come in and look at their whole bank. You will be on one of those lists. They will ask additional questions. Don't be concerned about it. Just talk to your ISO. If you're, you're not understanding what they're asking, they will help you through the process. And if you are getting in the business, we can help you through that process also. So if you're thinking about starting your own profitable ATM business, but didn't know where to start, I want to invite you to our free checklist entitled ATM Business Passive Income Checklist. The five things you need to know to start your profitable ATM business so you can have a clear roadmap towards ATM business success. You can earn between $250 and $1,500 passive income every single month. All right, let's get back to the video. Number three, return on investment, or some of the big shots like to say ROI. So if you hear ROI, what's that bill? That's return on investment. So how long is that going to take? We look at it could take anywhere from six months to 18 months to return your initial investment. Some people calculate it a different way. Some people calculate it on how much is the ATM going to cost me and what's my return on investment. Other people throw the vault cash money in for that calculation. I don't consider vault cash. It's cash. It's an asset. However, the ATM business doesn't work. You just go like this and you sell your ATM, you take the cash back. So I don't put that into how long it takes back. I just look at the asset. So, but depending on how you're going to define it, you could, it could lengthen out how long it takes you to get your money back. 
So in my rule of thumb, it's six months to 18 months, depending on how good the location is. If you wanna throw the cash in, it could be a lot longer, depending on how you calculate that. Number four, marketing and customer service. Bill, people are asking, well, how do I market my business? Do I need a website? Do I need a landing page? I'm a big proponent of not spending money where you don't need to be. We were in business for a long time before we got a website. I don't believe that you need a website or a landing page. If you're a creative genius and you could do it free of charge, then have a landing page. I don't necessarily know you need a website. I see bars and restaurants. They don't have a website, they have a Facebook page. Start with maybe a Facebook page and then go from there. I don't think it's a big requirement. It's not gonna draw traffic to you. You want things to draw traffic to you. Customer service is talking to your customer from time to time. So what I would do is I, maybe not when you're filling, but maybe do a pop-in and the opposite week or opposite time. I would definitely talk to your customer at least once a month to say, hey, how's things going? And really what you're doing is you're asking them, hey, do you know anybody else? Uh, do you have another convenience store person or another friendly location that you could refer me? I'm looking for new business. You're trying to get referrals from them. So your customer service is asking them how we're doing in the location and then asking them for information to try to get other location. This is a big thing. We just walked in a location. We changed the ATM out from an older model to a newer model. During that change out, we discovered, hey, they have another store and now we're going to put an ATM into their other store. But that doesn't happen unless we spend time in a location talking to them. We got lucky because we were there for about a half an hour changing out the ATM and that's when the store owner let us know, hey, he just acquired another store. And point number five is networking and power partner. If you're, gonna, if you're thinking about getting into the mobile business, you want to create yourself networking. One of the three places that you can get mobile business is going to be from the local city, the local Rotary, and a local chamber of commerce. These three people put on fairs and festivals in every city at least once a year. So if you, let's go XYZ city, you want to see if they have a chamber of commerce in there, you can join the chamber of commerce. That'll probably cost you anywhere from a hundred to five hundred dollars a year. In there, what you're trying to do is you're going to events to see who's the local rotary. How do I get this a chamber of commerce? Have a fundraising event that I could put an ATM in. And then the other thing you want to do is you want to see does the city have that and who's the big shots at the city that you can talk to about putting a mobile event. Sometimes they just do a, a fall festival, but most of them do something in the summer that brings in a lot of people because they're trying to raise money either for the city or they're raising money for a rotary or they're raising money for the local chamber of commerce. These are three areas that you can target to do mobile events for your ATM. Networking, those are the networking. Power partners are somebody who's already in a location and they already have a vested interest for another business. Maybe they're a salesman for liquor or for booze or they're a chip vendor. So they put in, I always partner, try to partner with the local guy who puts in chips in a convenience store or sells soap to the laundromats or sells liquor to the bars. Those are power partners. Those are the people that you wanna associate with and you want to get in front of and also be friends. They will help you get location because they're already there talking to them. It's not a big stretch for them to talk to the owner. Hey, I know you don't have an ATM. The owner already trusts that person because they've been dealing with them for months or if not years. And then they say, hey, I got a friend who's in an ATM business. That would be you. And then you can get your ATM in there. It's a good way to shorten your time. We're not going door to door. I don't oppose door to door. I do it all the time. We, print, we basically practice seven principles of salesmanship for our ATM business, but this is a nice way that you don't have to go and beat all the doors and you can partner with them to get your ATM in some of these locations. I just wanna thank you guys for liking and subscribing to our channel. So if you're interested in getting your own ATM business, I wanna invite you to a free checklist entitled ATM Business Passive Income Checklist. The five things you need to know to start making passive income, make more money for your family, and create more time for you. If this is interesting, click the link down below and start your ATM journey today. Again, this is Phil from the ATM Mastermind Group page, where we buy your freedom back one transaction at a time.